the commuters. Bodies clot, clot, clotted together, legs knotted, faces blotched and blotted. We commute. Stood up, shut up, shut up, shut up. Pulses pulse, sweat glands seep. Lego men and work were barbies. Office sheep were office sheep. And I'm just a mouse on a wheel, strapped for cash, so I've strapped on the blinkers, become a company thinker. sat down next to Louise Fazakli, who I didn't realise at the time, but she uh, was a brilliant poet, lovely person, and she was putting on an event at Wigan Museum, it was called Wigan the Soap Opera, and she convinced me to write a poem and perform it. I started five years ago, last month, and I'd never performed and never written, and was terrified, in fact, John, you were there, and one or two of us, and I just was... And so I do this all over the place now. I've been doing poetry for about a year. We put events on at the market. And I remember distinctly one guy, I said, you know what, what about culture in Wigan? And he just looked at me steely and said, there's more culture in a pot of yoghurt than there is in Wigan. <laughs> and it was just like, that, that, there are a lot of people who don't know what's going on. And it is an absolute rich vein of culture. Oddly, I mean, I've brought people back from Brighton to Wigan um, and they've been shocked at how a small town has got so much um, creativity and passion and, and art going on and people have a kind of stigma about the North of Wigan and yeah, it's kind of, it belies all of that stigma. I think um, when you live in a small town, you have the beauty of being able to develop your own voice because in sometimes in big cities there's a sense of everyone sounding the same and um, people copying each other's work. Whereas in a small town I don't think you get that as much. You've got the chance to be more of an individual and actually bring something new and fresh. I've stopped the drastic rewire. I've stopped dreaming big dreams. Now I just tinker. I'm part of the team. Tap, 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 fingers do the walking. Tap, 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 headset, mindset does the talking. This plastic self corrupts with stealth. Computer, commuter, computer, commuter, commuter, commuter. We begin to hate the rain. And I love the rain. Tap, 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 it pours on my window. And out I rush to stand with the smokers. Face up, gleeful. My cheeks are wet, my cold hands wings And yes, these are a few of my favourite things Colleagues, don't straight jacket me back inside Don't make me sing your company song I'm not a commuter I don't belong I've met lots of talented individuals while I've been living in Wigan um, But it seems to me that there's brain drain It seems to me that a lot of the talented and interested people um, and I think that's um, a shame because the community in which we live are not getting the benefit of local people creating art. But I felt very lucky to receive a lot of support from Wigan Kindness from the Art Development Officer when I was a younger artist from Wigan Literature Festival when that was up and running. Unfortunately, due to the cuts, we don't have as many arts offices anymore. It's just Tiny, so there isn't the space now to have a development program for artists. With the funding being cut and libraries being cut, um, it's hard to see where we can get that support, particularly in the initial parts of the movie. There aren't the infrastructure there to support you from government council. A lot of the arts is led by the, art, the artists themselves. Like Wigan's always had like a really good kind of music scene. We've got artists, but it's kind of underground. What, what they have has been, it's been taken away because they've not got the funding for it. Um, so it's about creating little networks and keeping the arts going. 
I studied quite late in life at BA Fine Art at Preston and I also did a certificate in education so I could teach uh, and uh, from there I just uh, started doing classes and this is the way I earn a living. You just get into this, I think anybody creative, to earn an income you have to do something that brings in a regular wage and I got work through Wigan College uh, which there was a lot of adult education at the time. I just love it. I think I get, as you can see, we get the banter from the people as well. And we have a laugh. I think pole dancing to me, it's more of an achievement. I've got more body confidence, so I can obviously I don't shy away from cameras and films and stuff, whereas you wouldn't catch me on anything before. And Literally, I can be proud of myself. I found Pulse Seduction back in 2007. Um, I used to be a dancer before I lost my leg and I wanted to return to dancing. But uh, trying to find somebody who would help me dance was a hard feat. But um, I went to my first class with Pulse Seduction and little by little they helped me gain confidence and since then I've been addicted to it ever since. Pole is for everybody. It is it is an experience. When I first started here, I thought I was too big. I thought I had a disability. I thought that everybody that did pole was slim and very athletic and that I would never fit in. It's a wonderful thing to look at all the people that I've met along the way and see how happy they are because of pole. It's, it's a good thing to get into as a hobby. Oi. Mr. Big, did you really think we'd fall for this marketing trick? Designing a pen just for a lady is misogynistic. But I would persuade people to come because the one thing about Wigan is it's real. Wigan in particular has got a massive history of people doing it for themselves. The music scene and the art scene started to collide, particularly when I was 19 there was a big flourishing of, of creative minds kind of all coming together so we started to put on interesting events, mixing up poetry and arts and things like that. Somehow there's certain minds and certain people who just, who happen to speak to each other. I mean one place, we had this um, pub called the Tudor House, which was just a pub, but um, it used to put on music and, and it had a real mix of creative people used to go to that and a lot of minds had met and collaborated from that place and then that those collaborations continued on. I work at the library, it would be a brilliant sort of put on an event that's uh, sort of showcasing art and artists, but not necessarily in a traditional sense. We started Spectral Freaks, um, it was last year, it was part of the Goal Fest, which is uh, the Wigan Council put on a festival, which is to engage with people and improve sort of digital literacy and digital skills in a sort of creative way. The artist is there, you can speak to them, you can talk to them, you can engage with them. And I found that um, was very inspiring for people and it sort of made them want to sort of do their own thing and actually thought, you know, come, come to realise actually this, this stuff isn't so hard that I could do that and I could see how that works. Now. I saw the, the board that was set in the library, Spectral Freaks, and I was curious. Uh, so uh, I tried the stuff out, he showed me. It's very simple, you just touch things and let things happen, and boy do they happen, it's, it's mind stuff, it's mind music, and you can, you can just put something down, you don't have to know a single thing about music, and you, you create, you create music without knowing anything about music, it's amazing. 